kind of two that we then filled with that, that we find uh, most intriguing. Um, to exploit the second of these, what I'm going to be doing is exploiting some developments from decision theory under uncertainty. Um, and this literature is, kind of leads us to think about uncertainty in much broader terms than the, than, than the more nearly defined risk analysis, uh, typically used in many economic analyses, and also uh, the type that were featured in the uh, uh, papers this morning. Uh, we believe, as I said, that uncertainty can and should be treated formally in discussions of economic policy responses to environmental challenges. Uh, one possibility is you see the, all, you know, all this uncertainty out there and announce things are hopeless. We would like to reach a different conclusion. And our aim is uh, to explore and contrast actually alternative ways uh, to, to do this, building on existing contributions, including um, one by my co-authors. So let me try to give a little bit of background here. Um, so as I said, you know, so uncertainty is kind of endemic to these economic analysis of global climate change and, and, and of mitigation policies. It's interesting, you know, Robbie Bonsall has done all this work on long-run risk, and many of us were scratching our head as exactly what is all this long-run risk that, that, that's being featured in the asset pricing literature, and yeah, so, so this seemed like a potentially fertile area for which there's legitimately long-run risk. Um, and that's leading us to think about things in a rather different way. Um, but the forecast of these climate models over decades are of limited reliability, and when I see the forecast over like centuries and stuff, I just scratch my head. And I, yeah, as macroeconomists, we forecast for a decade, we're lucky. So it's, uh, um, I, I think uncertainty is absolutely central to all this. And of course, we know the economic impacts of climate change are also unknown. And so the real question then is do we confront this uncertainty, or do, I, I, or do, or do, um, or do we use it as a reason to, uh, to dismiss modern values? Hopefully, we can front it. So I find it very helpful or very valuable to think to kind of differentiate components to uncertainty. Okay. Um, so let me think about, let me kind of make three different differentiations that I find useful. First is model risk. So if I write down a model, a fully specified model, it tells me the probabilities of everything. And, um, and and so what probabilities? Is, and they just so, so, so probabilities are. Are associated with specific models. I, by model here, I mean you know, knowing the parameters and, uh, and everything. And by that, we can just write out all the probabilities of all the events in the future. Um, we write down risk aversion parameters, and it confront and, 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 and they're set to confront that type of risk. And there's no doubt that's a component to to to, uh, to, to discussions of these models and models elsewhere. This is the component that's really been featured most in the rational expectations literature. There's another component that um, has a long history in statistics, um, and, and is, uh, uh, I'm going to call it model ambiguity, and that's how much confidence we place in each model. Uh, we may have multiple models on the table, we have to figure out how to work and, and uh, uh, there's some we have more confidence in than others, and maybe we use historical data to help us sort that out, uh, uh, maybe we use other information to try to sort that out. So how we weight these different models, how we assign confidence to, to them. The third one, and the third one I think in many respects may be the most important one, and it's also the hardest one to fully conceptualize. The models we use in this area and in you know, virtually all areas of, econo of, of uh, scientific discipline, and certainly in economics, are misspecified. You know, your uh, applied econometricians know they're misspecified, they can get around it by pretending to be non-parametric and then they don't, can't estimate anything very, very, very well and they end up with bounds. Those type of aren't very useful in practice. The models that are, that, that are usable in practice are ones that typically have fairly tight parameterizations attached to them, the parameters that we think we might have some interpretation for. Uh, but the, on the other hand, the models are demonstrably wrong, but we still think they're useful. Uh, and so how do we use models that are not perfect? Uh, so I, I, I think this is what we do. And, um, uh, but how do we do this in a sensible way? And, and, and this is this third source of uncertainty that I think is the is, is, is kind of the hardest one to wrap our hands around, but on the other hand, I think it's one that we uh, uh, deserves more, perhaps, the most attention of these three. 